Now you definitely recording. Yeah, we recording. <laughs> I'm KJ McLaurin. You know, I'm the founder of Liquid FX. You feel me? I live in Florida. I met Justin Ward over the internet. You feel me? Who who you, who you learn by? Me? God, tons of people, bro. Tons of people for real? Yeah. You kind of trade like um, Nick Shine. How so? It's like, you know how you got all this, that stuff on your chart? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like him, like he got a lot of stuff on his chart too. That's true. Now he does more of that. Yeah. What about you? How long have you been trading? Oh fuck. Uh, uh on and off, but in total like like three years, maybe two, three years. Um, but I started out in like stocks. I did that for like a year. So forex it's been closer to like two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Seven years. God, seven? Seven, seven, bro. Damn, not man. not like seven strong, because I would have been way further than what I am, but like five years, like knowing about Forex, learning about it, but not taking it serious. Then like two, yeah. three years, or maybe like four years not taking it serious, like three years, like taking it serious. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's how it goes with a lot of people, because it takes so long to just like learn it all. Losing money too is like I don't know if this for me. Yeah, this losing money like damn, I need that money. Yeah, yeah, for real. Who'd you learn from? He don't even have a name, bro. Like I don't even. He don't even have a name. Like he's not big. He he just he's not big on social media. He just make money and like chill. Yeah, but I, so I mainly learn from myself, like experience over time, just learning, losing bread, losing money. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people think one person's going to teach you a strategy and then you're going to make money. But a lot of it's just figuring out yourself and like what works for you. Because you could you could learn a strategy that actually works, but if it doesn't fit you, you're still not going to make any money. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Right. So uh, what, what type of trader are you? I see you be dipping into like fundamentals and stuff like that. What are you? What, what do you do? Um, honestly, I use, I use, I use everything. Like, um, I wouldn't say I'm only fundamental trader. Um, but I do like getting that context. So I don't really like taking a trade unless it has a fundamental like backing behind it, unless there's a reason the market should move that way. So then once I get a pair that I think, okay, this makes sense. It should move this way. Then I go look at the technicals. I look at price action, market structure, wait for that to line up and then use like trend lines, fibs, moving averages. So the whole lot of stuff to, to take my trade. Um, so I use sort of a combination of everything. Okay. Bet, bet. That, yeah. sound, that sound good. That sound good. That sound good. Me, I just use uh, technicals, no fundamentals. I look at Forex factor, but I don't really care too much about it. It's yeah. just there. It's just there. You seen that big move that happened this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a good amount on EJ, so that was nice. You trying to get into charting, or you want to like introduce yourself, or? All right. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Justin. Um, yeah, I've been trading like three years, and um, I live in Cali, like Northern California. And uh, a couple of months ago, I started Swing Effects where I like teach people uh, fundamentals, how to incorporate that, some technicals and all that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. You even give like free stuff, right? You even give like a free course or something. Yeah, yeah, I made a free training. I got YouTube, tons of YouTube videos too. Um, but I made a free training, just going over some basics. It's in my bio. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll put up my Instagram at some point, but yeah. All right, all right, bet. So, um, Let's get it. Let's get into the charts. Let's. Uh, you want me to go first right. since you yeah, the host? Sure. You want to go? All right. Just allow share your screen, and I'm. A, I'm gonna get into a couple of trades that I I I supposed to took, but I got drunk last night because I am human. So anybody watching, just just know I missed out on all the trades I I, I had lined up, bro. All of them. 
<laughs> you know how to uh, do the um, the screen share? Yeah, let me see. Uh, okay, should be should be on. All right. There we go. All right. So before I even do this, I'm I'm gonna get into how I trade. Like I just trade off of structure, bro. I just trade off of mainly just structure on uptrends and downtrends, and I just add price action to it. All right. All right. So it's pretty simple. I just it's just a clear, quick breakdown. It's not like giving away too much or giving away too little. Yeah. Basically, I find like um like a clear trend. Mm -hmm. And you know, clear trends with the uptrend is creating higher highs and, and, and uh, higher lows and stuff like that. That's pretty simple textbook stuff. So yeah. what I do, I just probably like draw a trend line and look for these um, these areas to get tested within the market. And then I'll wait for it, to, for it to show me that it's holding with like wick rejections, bullish and golfers or uh, pendants dojis anything to show me that it's not breaking through that level yeah and that the level is uh valid like i'll wait for structure to build on that certain level before i actually think about taking a bow or anything you feel me mm -hmm. but like some people take fibonacci retracements and i i do that too but i don't need it you feel me I, it's not yeah. needed. but yeah that's just like a simple thing that i do and then i i catch the, the retracement and then i take the buy position and just trade it up Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, I've seen your charts. It looks like a lot of like break and retests of like levels and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so these are trades. I'm gonna go over two trades that I missed last night, bro. Just two of them. Okay. And then you can do like two two trades you you took. I'm pretty sure you took them, right? I took a trade uh a few days ago. I don't I'm not I don't trade every day. I trade like maybe once or twice a week. I don't really trade that often. Um, but I can go over some trades I took. Okay, that's crazy. I see that. See, that's something I didn't know. That's something. That's something different yeah. between me and you. Okay, so like this right here, I noticed that price was an uptrend, right? On off the daily four hour, anything you can see that is obviously an uptrend. Yeah, pretty. So I waited for this level right here. This is a major liquidity zone. You know what liquidity is, right? Mm -hmm. This is a major liquidity zone to the left. You always look to the left. I I learned that from just learning and just watching other people. And then I got this 200 moving average right here. It shows me that price is working as like support. And then like I waited for price to give me this. This is exactly what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted, bro. And then it, it basically gave me a triple bottom off this support level on the one hour as well. So I was like, boom, I'm gonna take a buy once the market opens up and then I didn't, I got drunk. I didn't even know it was gonna shoot this high. I didn't know like, <laughs> you you never expecting what's gonna happen. And then the, the yeah. coronavirus thing happened and then boom, that happened. I was like, bro, 200 pips in one day. Yeah, that that's a good risk reward. That's like 8.7. what you think about that trade? It's straight, right? No, yeah, that was that was that was a good trade. I was thinking about taking AJ long actually too. Same thing, um, but personally, I don't like when a trade, when like a trend is really sort of overextended like that. I like to wait for deeper retracements, so that's what I was waiting on. Um, but yeah, a lot of guys in my group took that trade and did pretty well too. Yeah. Oh, so your so your students already had this same trade lined up like this? Yeah, technically, and then fundamentally, it also lined up. To head higher so it all worked out yeah okay so i got a question how did you guys know fundamentally wise that 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 coronavirus um thing was gonna happen how did y'all know that so we didn't that that's the thing we didn't know okay. that was gonna come out that accelerated it um but the main reason uh we thought it was gonna head higher was because of um essentially more optimism for biden right because biden last week basically won um, and that obviously puts the likelihood of a uh, stimulus, right? U.S. stimulus getting passed puts that higher. So markets like that he won because it's likely to be more stimulus passed. And basically, it was just figuring the optimism from last week would most likely carry over, uh, especially since like Friday and Saturday really solidified that he won. So that was the main idea.
Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah. I'm gonna go with one more trade. I'm gonna go with one more trade that I miss. I miss it. It's just fucking crazy. Sorry, my language. I know. Excuse my language. I can't even curse because it's on YouTube. But it's just crazy that I really got drunk at the wrong time, and then a, a big news event like that happened. This was the most simplest trade you could ever find, as well, too. Like this trade right here, is super simple. This is textbook, bro. Like once again, like I know this price was creating higher highs. And then price came to a major level that that held in the past, like with a lot of wick rejections. It showed me that it was a strong, strong, strong resistance level, right? Yeah. So I was like, all right, bet. Um, all I'm gonna wait for is 4 a.m. to come around. 4 a.m. to come around, and I'm gonna get in. 4 a.m. came around. I turned off my alarm and went back to sleep. <laughs> and I saw that this 50 moving average, bro, was right here lining up with this 200 moving average. Yeah. Plus, it was a strong resistance level, and then it, it's an inverted head and shoulders right here so basically this is neckline as well of this yeah. pattern on the 30 minute and it shot up 260 pips and i ain't, i ain't even make a pip off of it but that was the two trades well, how you feel about this one uh same thing uh i was pretty bullish on gj and ej uh for almost the same exact reason uh because the yin is a safe haven so if there's optimism, which we were expecting that there would be this week, um, then the yin would sell off, which would obviously push GJ higher. Um, so, yeah, that's a good trade. I was actually in GJ at ooh, what price? Like 135.2, like 135.24 last week. You got an entry all the way down here? Uh, 135. Four? Two four, yeah, and that like sort of uh, consolidation last week. Oh, right here. Oh, I know exactly where he was at. Yeah, yeah, right. Right, right the same trade. I took the same exact trade for a buy. Yeah, same. I just didn't hold it, so that <laughs> that was. Oh, you didn't hold it? No, I didn't hold it. So I, was, I thought so, you were swinging oh. trader. Why you close it? I was. I took it basically. You see that spike? You see that big green spike it had? Yeah, that was uh, because the Bank of England had like a monetary policy meeting, and I was expecting that to be good for the pound. So it was actually a shorter term trade, just based on that meeting. Spiked up and grabbed my pips, but uh, should have hold. Should it? I I was expecting to hold, but uh, you know, it's just how many pips? How many pips did you catch off of that move? It was pretty quick. Um, I caught. I closed within a, like a few minutes, I think. I caught like 30, 40 pips and just got out. Yeah. Okay. That's still good. If you, you trade something higher, then you trade a standard or higher too, right? Like that's yeah. a question I actually wanted to ask you because you be having like 200, 300 pip moves, bro. And I'll be like, he really swinging everything. You yeah. trade a standard or higher or, or no? Yeah, yeah. The thing is um, – Okay. My my stop losses are bigger too. So you know winners are winners are big, two hundred pips, three hundred pips, but then the stops are like fifty or more. So you know, balances out. So balances out. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And do you pull partials as it, it goes, or you just keep the whole big move in there? You just keep riding up the the pips. It depends. Depends how strongly I feel about it. But normally, I'll take some partials. Um, as it makes like a higher high or like depending if I'm long or short, if I'm going long, higher high 127, usually I'll take some partials. Um, but it really depends on the fundamentals and my confidence. So it's pretty variable. Okay. 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 So um, basically what you're saying is if, if you see like a strong fundamental news event about to come out, you, you, it, it, you will basically go off your trade off of that. So if you are already in profit, if like a major news event is about to release, you'll go ahead and pull it out or what? Um, so I don't necessarily trade events like data and like CPI and stuff. Mostly okay. like- That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. It's mostly like macroeconomic stuff, like political stuff, coronavirus, like basically longer term sentiment, right? Because if it was just data- you know, like that spike I was talking about, or like a interest rate meeting that only affects the market for like 
an hour or two, three hours and spikes up or down. Um, but sentiment, you know, that can carry it hundreds of pips for a week, two weeks, three weeks. So that's mainly what I'm going off. If the sentiment is still strong and I think it could go higher, then I'm going to keep holding basically. Okay, so I'm gonna end my screen share and then you can just go over a couple of trades you took or I don't really want to see how you be having 50 pip stop losses and why oh, you gotta show me because all right, yeah. I'm scared to risk 30 pips, bro. I risk 15, 20 pips. All right, let's see. I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you? Yeah, I can see it. Which screen is it? I got like it's the AWW board. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. So let me just quickly draw out. So once I get like a fundamental idea for a pair, which essentially is like two ideas, right? Because if you're holding, let's say you take like GJ, right? You need the pound to be strong and you need the yin to be weak for it to, to move strongly in a given direction. So really, I need two different ideas with the supports, one being strong and one being weak. Um, and then once I get that and I'm like, okay, this thing could head higher in the next couple of weeks or at least a one week. Um, then I look on the chart, right? So let's say it's in like a downtrend, but you know, it's sort of consolidating and I think it could head higher normally. Cause I'm, I'm a pretty conservative trader. I would like to wait for, I would like for these highs to break to confirm my idea um, and then look for a pullback. And so when I look for that pullback, you know, I'll use maybe like a trend line and like some moving average and then a fib. And then let's say it lines up around this area. That's where I'm looking to get in on this idea. And then, you know, my stop loss will be probably like down here. Let's say this is like, I don't know, 50 pips or something. If I'm really, I feel good about it. It'll be under here. Maybe it'll be like 80 pips, hundred pips. And then maybe these highs are like here. And if I, if I think it will head up there in the next couple of weeks, I'll hold, you know, so maybe this is like 200, 300 pips. And then I get in and then probably somewhere around here, I would take some partials as it just makes a new high. Um, and then just keep holding stop would be a break even. And then, you know, obviously, if things change, starts heading lower, the fundamentals sort of shift a bit. I'll maybe close my whole trade or just take some partials. Um, but then as it goes in my favor, I'm just going to keep holding. Uh, and that's pretty, that's pretty much a. You trade. got balls, bro. Cause how could you like, have you, have this ever happened to you? Like you up 200, hundred pips and then you just lose it all or just hit your break even stop or. That's happened. Yeah, that's happened. Uh, it's pretty frustrating, but. That's why I like to take some partials. So at least I get paid a little bit for it, but uh, it happens sometimes. It's just, it sucks, but yeah, <laughs> not what you could do. That's crazy. But yeah, um, I, I get it now. I get how you trade. I mean, you, you don't really even think about buying or selling until you check the, the fundamentally structure of everything. And then you go in with that. Yeah, pretty much. So that's way smarter, yeah. bro. That's way smart. I need to start doing it. It is, it's also a bit more work and yet it makes you be a bit more selective. That's why I don't trade that often because mm -hmm. there's not always a bias to go off of. Uh, but yeah, let me get into some trades here. Let me talk about actually EJ trade I just took here. Um, actually it's already marked up, but uh, basically that's what I just described. <laughs> so <laughs> it was in a downtrend, right? In a downtrend. And then uh, <clears throat> started sort of chopping around ahead of elections because, you know, no one really wants to take, take heavy trades uh, ahead of elections. And then, you know, around this area, this is November 3rd. So this is election time. And it sort of was confirmed that Biden won. That's why we got some nice optimism. We saw the yin, the yin uh, depreciated off of that optimism. We made a new high. So after we made this new high, that sort of gave me confirmation. Market structure's changing. The fundamentals look good for more yin weakness and less 
and also sort of dollar um, because the dollar is a safe haven too a little bit just like the yen so optimism would most likely push the dollar lower and stocks higher so when money flows out of the US dollar it usually goes into the euro the euro picks up a little bit if the US dollar is selling off so overall EJ made sense to go long uh, waited for a pullback and I got it around this area, right? 38 fib. Uh, we had like this nice trend line, this moving average here. So it was a good area. Uh, hopped in. The entry wasn't the best. I could have got a lower price down here, but it's whatever. Um, cause that's the thing. My entry doesn't have to be too precise, you know, cause yeah. You yes. got a big top loss. Exactly. So, you know, I don't sweat the entry too much, but I do like to get a good price. And then, yeah, I mean, overall, I just held it. Um, I, I took a little bit of partials here. Um, not a whole lot, just because it was moving pretty nicely. And then overnight, this is something I didn't expect. I thought it was going to be more gradual. We got that uh, vaccine news. Um, which was very optimistic for the market, made the yin sell off heavy, which is why GJ also pushed up um, and then just flew up. And then I forgot exactly where, but somewhere around this area, I just took the trade off 200 and like 200 something pips. So yeah, that was, that was the trade. Okay. I got a question. So um, with those big stop losses, um, how much drawdown do you usually see? Do you even ever see like 50 pip, like 40 pip drawdown, 30 pip drawdown? What's the most drawdown you, you actually see when you take your trades? Uh, I see all, all types of drawdown. Usually I don't close it early. So, you know, sometimes it gets pretty close to my stop and then goes the other direction. Mm. I've been trying to reduce my stop loss size. I it used to be way higher, actually. I used to sometimes do... 100 pips, 150 pip max stop mm -hmm. losses. But that was just a little bit too much. Uh, it's like right around your area, your sweet area. Yeah, like 70, 80, 50. Like that sort of area is a good good amount for me. Okay. Um, and then the TP is always variable. So I don't usually have a set TP. But yeah. And then your stop losses, you put it underneath this, the, the most lowest structure or the most highest structure. So even if it breaks that structure point, it has to break the second one as well, right? Yeah, usually. Usually I like to be pretty conservative. So, you know, Smart. in this case, this is pretty risky. You know, maybe I'd have it down here, down here. So, yeah, I basically base it off the lows if I'm going long or based off the highs if I'm going short. Pretty much. Yeah. So that's one. Show me. Um, did you Let's... even – did you look at – I see you got gold in your in your – um cabinet yeah did you look at that yeah i got gold crazy I actually last week i took a gold trade at the beginning of the week that was pretty good so i'll show that one um but okay. really i don't i don't like touching gold too much um see that 900 pip drop thousand pip drop right there yeah that was insane you know some of my, some of my people caught that yeah i saw a lot of people that a lot of people made a lot of money on gold yeah what is that? Yeah, like 5%. Damn. But um, so let me talk about that gold trade. But I don't really like trading gold too much. Um, Go to something else then if you want to. No, uh, I'll show you all. But the reason I don't like trading it is, A, it's based off the U.S. dollar fundamentals partially. And that's a mess. So it's hard to hold. It's hard to hold for a long time because uh, it's constantly changing uh, but for like short trades like this one I'm about to show it's I like it um, it was super simple and really not too complicated um, so similar idea last week I was expecting uh, a little bit of optimism because Biden was expected to win this was before the election like Sunday I believe Sunday Monday um, you know this high this high broke so this came up, came into this area. It just was perfect technically. I mean, uh, let's draw a fib. 
textbook right there. Te yeah, just textbook. Came down to the uh, 50 MA, 38 trend line. And I got in like right here. Stop loss. No drawdown at all. No, not at all. I've got it's like here or something. Um, and then I held up until about this area. So around 200 pips. Uh, and then election, it was like the day before elections or something like that. Um, obviously, that was a mistake. <laughs> but uh, no, it was a good trade. I can't, I can't complain. Yeah, but. That's, that's a great trade. I know, I know you seeing that those candles getting smaller and smaller made yeah. you even want to close it out a little faster. Yeah, exactly. Also, there's, there's a good amount of confluence. I mean, you had some MAs, you had an extension. Also, you were coming up into this area here. Yeah, that strong support level right there. This area. So it just made sense, you know, just take my money and, and run. Yeah. Yeah. The, bro, the most pips I ever caught was like, in, in one trade was like 150. Because I'm like an intraday slash swing trader. So I'm trying to get in on your level with the swinging. I'm, I'm trying to, bro, but it's, I don't only think I have the balls yet to hold to let a couple thousand just slip from my hands. But I'm trying to get into it because I can make way more. Yeah. I mean, even if you just took, you know, if you took 80% off and left 20 running, you know, that could turn into like another percent or two or three eventually. So, I mean, the reason, the reason I'm comfortable holding is just because I have that fundamentals behind me. That's, that's basically what I base everything off of. If I don't have that, I'm not comfortable holding a trade. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So uh, the next thing we're going to do for y'all is um, cause bro, I posted, I posted, um, I posted the little flyer in John. I didn't know it was going to get so much attention. I got yeah. like 500, 500 people saying yes on that. I'm like, yeah. damn, <laughs> y'all wanted that bad? Like, is that, is that crazy? Cause I just made a YouTube channel, bro. I just made my YouTube channel and I get like yeah. 500 views a video. So I'm like, okay, if I know if I add him to it, I see you got your little YouTube, you, you trying to grow it in John and you already on a higher scale than me. If we do a, a collab, it'll help both of us out on both of our, with our followers. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, let's just do that. But I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over a trade that I'm looking at tonight. Okay. And, um, you can do whatever you want to do, and we can just wrap it up from there. Sounds good. All right, all right. I think I feel like that gold about to shoot up. Honestly. Yeah, it could. Gold loves stop hunts. Like it, that's why I always call it the king of stop hunts because. Everyone's in long, and then in like a day or two, it just wipes all that out. You see that here, 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 here. So that's another reason I don't like trading it, because you never know when it's just gonna come down and take you out. So, so what traders do you um, look up to? Oh, that's a good question. That's a can good I question. can I get the screen while we talk? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me pause screen sharing. I got it. I got the screen already. Okay. So yeah, what traders do you look up to, honestly? A couple I looked up to mainly. Um, one of them is uh, his name is Sebastian. I don't know if you follow him. He's from the UK. Uh, no, I probably so don't. It's Sebastian Dub is like his IG handle or something. Okay. Uh, he he like kind of quit social media like a month or two ago, I think. Uh, so he's not really active on there anymore. He's got like Lamborghinis and stuff. This guy's this guy has money. This guy's money. He's like, he, he got like Sam like Sam nine 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 or something like that. No no no, that's a different guy. That's a different dude. Um, this guy's, if I know the story correctly. He like was in chemistry and sold a company. So I guess he had a decent, he had, he had money before he started trading. Then he got into trading. Um, but I think he shorted, he shorted in March. I saw him, he posted a trade. It's, in, it's crazy. He shorted the market, like, this, like just like US 30 or something in March when the market crashed at like the top. And he was in, I forgot how many lots maybe like 50 or something. This man made millions of dollars on that one trade. I mean, he's, 
he's he's just like yeah. Anyways, he's top tier. He's not even like us. Like we no. know where yeah, this guy. Yeah, this guy's crazy. So I look up to him. Um, I don't know. There's not too many people I'd say I'd look up to. Uh, another trader. He actually he does stocks, but uh, Umar, I think is his name. No, I know Umar. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, he's pretty. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I, I like following him. Um, man, that's about it. I don't know. I don't really. That's about it for real. Yeah, like these people I, I look at, but I don't know if I'd say I look up to them. You look know, just, I just sort of, yeah. Because you're not really into like the the what 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 they show. You you into more of like they skill. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, okay. like I don't look up to people who make a lot of money. Um, partially is you don't know what's real or not, and secondly, I just look at their skill. You know, like what they're sharing, not like knowledge wise. Um, and there's not too many people I see that is sharing anything like exceptional. So, yeah. Okay, so the um, I only look up to like two people, like maybe like maybe one. Two, I would say two, three to one, one to three. <laughs> one is Q-Banks, bro. I, I love Q-Banks, bro, because he's African-American, he's black. Well, I don't yeah. think he's African-American, but I know he's black. Yeah. And where I'm from, black people don't really come up from from stuff like this. It's it's damn near impossible, bro. Either we rapping, trapping, or playing basketball, playing sports. So we yeah. we really never come up from stuff like this. So him, that's why I look up to him. And then the other person will be um dude I just mentioned, Sammy. I don't I don't know his name, but Sam mm -hmm. 999, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's amazing at trading and he don't really do social media either. So I look up to him as well. And then one other person is um Damn, bro, so many people. Um, I'm gonna say that's it for right now. I'm gonna say that's it. I'm gonna say that's it for right now. Actually, uh, Sammy, I actually uh, took his seminar in Montreal. I went to go see him. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. It was like, uh, like over a year ago. But yeah, I went to Montreal for one of his like things, and it was cool. You know Roy? That's what I look up to. Roy. He's like African. He's African, bro. He's African. I don't think I've, I don't think I've I've seen him. Yeah. He's bro. He don't. I'm I'm gonna show you his page after this. He don't really. Matter of fact, hold up. I'm gonna try to find it real quick before we end this. Bro, he's a ghost. He's a ghost, bro. He don't post. He don't really post. Roy N L. Him right here. I'm gonna let y'all see him. Him. Let's see. Can you see my screen or no? Uh, it's sort of bright. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share it. I'm gonna share his profile to you, uh, to you real quick. My life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's really, he's really good, and he will never post uh, material extra stuff. That's why I really like him. Yeah, he looks like a swing trader. I think he is. That's that's bro. He reminds me so much of you. Yeah. That's what's All up. right, so let me go ahead and find this because time winding down pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, hold up. I don't know what I'm trying to Bro, structure really hasn't even built like I wanted to on any of these pairs, really. Like, uh, like maybe maybe right here, AUDJPY. If if the market doesn't go back to to its usual, form, which is going slow. We could mm -hmm. see like a push from this level, but this this wouldn't really be a strong, like you said, like a stronger retracement. I know you trade AUD more than yeah. me. So what what would you think about this level holding for for buys? Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Uh, for some reason, I can't see your screen. I don't know why. You can't see my screen. No. Okay, I'm gonna just look at yours then. Okay. All right. Let me resume. Can you see it? Yeah, I think I can end it your screen. Okay. All right, like this level right here. This level. Oh, right. shoot. All right, you're drawing. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you said like like this level here? Yeah, it's, it's not like a, yeah, that, that little support level right there. Okay. Yeah, that I region. could definitely, yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty decent retracement. Uh. 
Yeah, that that looks pretty good. Let's see, one hour. I like I like basing off of like fibs and moving averages. So I like to wait for usually it to at least get to the fifty or a hundred MA on the one hour. And so yeah, it looks like that could that could line up nicely. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, how long would you say you would want structure basically like structure to build in that area before you even think about taking buys? Usually, yeah. I usually like to see some type of rejection or consolidation. Um, yeah. Sometimes I'll set like a order or I'll just like get in at a level and not wait. But um, normally I do like to see some type of rejection because sometimes it'll just go right through and you can sort of save yourself on some of those. Okay, so that's that's my that's my trade. I don't really trade AUD, but I just gave you all that. You feel me? That's that's a support level that's hopefully over over time. Maybe maybe tonight price will go down there and hold. See, he, he drew out a trend line, and we got that purple support level off the six one eight retracement as well. If price can get there and hold, I'll be personally looking to take buys if it lines up how I want it to. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You smoke. Uh, not really. Sometimes I do edibles, but I don't yeah. smoke. Or, I don't smoke or drink. I just drank last night, bro. Wait a I minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't. I don't like, it was just you ask night. anybody, bro. You can ask anybody. I don't. I don't smoke or drink, bro. And I just did it last night, and that was I should never did it last night. I shouldn't because look what it cost me. Yeah, it cost me two hundred pips on each pair I traded. Well, on the weekend though, like Friday night, Saturday night. That's what no, I, I, I still don't like. You surprised, right? Why? Why just last night out of any any day? Because my girl. <laughs> it's hard to explain. It's like my girl people came down here from New York, bro. So it's like I might as well turn up with them for yeah. the one time just to do it. I should never did it though, but it's it's all good. It's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean. The thing with trading is like sometimes you're gonna miss move because of like life and stuff. Mm-hmm, like exactly. you can't beat yourself up too much, honestly. That's true. That's true. That's yeah. that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, that's what's up. No, this was fun though. We should do like some more videos though. All right, let's see how this one do. And yeah. um, I'm gonna edit my video. I mean, we can we can post it on both hours, right? We yeah. just gotta do a different title, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's. Should be good, yeah. All right, so uh, I'm a, I'm gonna edit mine. Probably gonna post mine tonight when I get back home, and um, yeah, we we just talk it out and do whatever we gotta do with it. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, it do the numbers that it that it's supposed to do, and then if they want it, we can do even more. I will even fly to you to, to actually like do a video. Feel me? Damn, all right, that's dedication. <laughs> yeah, bro, I'm, bro, I see your YouTube. I see everybody YouTube is like, I got I'm I already got the clout. I just need to do it. Really, I just need to put myself in that in that situation. Yeah. But all right, I'm gonna be out. Um, if y'all want to follow me on Instagram? It's is McLaurin M C L A U R I I N. Um, let, me, let me type it out here. All right, spell it. M C L A U R I I N. All right, that's my Instagram, and then my business. Uh, my business is Liquid FX. Just look up Liquid FX Pro. Oh, Jesus, there you go. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just gonna, let's go leave it. And then my business is Liquid FX Pro. All right, let me do this. Should on a flyer, should, on a thumbnail, should I put our businesses below? Because I only put verses. I didn't know what else to put. Honestly. Yeah, you could put like links and stuff. I don't know. Okay, you got to show me how to do that. I don't need all to do that. Okay. What's your website? I'm just do that. Uh, liquidfx.com. Liquidfxpro.com. That, that's Pro. That's Pro.com. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So this is our stuff. Uh, you know, do whatever you want with it. That's my Instagram. And this is the website. So, yeah. Well, all right. Stay safe, uh, Justin. Yeah, stay safe, bro. Talk to you soon. I'm KJ. Remember that. I'm KJ. KJ, all right. <laughs> all right.
come from a town where most of the people are so close minded They go into school and they work in a job but they don't even like it I won't be put in a box, nobody telling me what I should rock Nobody telling me what I should rock